It's been a great morning actually being here really because it's when I got here last night it was absolutely gorgeous. Late last night it was around half eleven when I got here I was coming over to the hotel. It was beautiful, really quiet, really nice lights and around it's beautiful city actually. It's my first time in Latvia, so really happy to be here actually. Great to be here. So yeah, my name's Tarun, as he's already mentioned. Uh, I probably want to thank you, thank all the pr uh, producers and the sponsors actually to be having me here. Really glad to be here as well. So the topic actually uh, I want to talk about is more around data security, data loss prevention. That's what the topic is about actually. So let you, to give you a bit of a quick introduction of my background, what my background looks like. So that's me when I was five years old actually. And that's the uniform of an Indian police, actually. So I wanted to be a police officer, that means. Never got there, of course, really. So anyway, but uh, yeah, that's how things are. That's my Twitter name. That's my mobile number, really. That's my <laughs> personal mobile number there. So I've been in, in working in, I started my career in around 1999. Uh, started with IT, doing systems, networks, security, working on different technologies, basically. And that's how I started. And been working on the business role in the last many years now. So this is what I enjoy, this is what my passion is, and this is why I'm here. So next year, I'm, I'm in the process of writing a book, which will be published uh, probably some point in the summer of next year. So looking forward to it as well. Quick overview on the agenda. So the agenda is about DLP. DLP stands for data loss prevention, data leakage prevention, uh, as you may already know about it. Just by the quick show of hands, how many of you actually are using DLP technologies in, in the businesses you work for or you are on the journey of you know, having DLP in, in your business? Anyone yet at all? Brilliant. Brilliant. That's good to know. That's good to know, actually. So, yeah, you're more than happy to you know, share your experiences at a later, later point or in the between, if you, whatever you like. It's, it's up to you. And so... Quick agenda, what is DLP, why should you have it? Uh, how do you build a strategy for you know, having DLP in your business? And uh, some key takeaways for it. Now if you're like me, who worries about data loss all the time, causing you hair loss, well, I can't give you any tips for hair loss, I can definitely give you some tips for data loss in that case. So what is DLP? DLP is more about a strategy of doing things on how to minimize the loss of data in your business. It's, think of it as actually sort of a, in a way, a strategy to build your security around data because the traditional network perimeters don't work. I mean, traditionally, if you think about it, we've been doing all the network things like firewalls, IDSs, and all the different technologies in place to protect our perimeters, but that definitely hasn't worked because we still see breaches all the time. So the focus is actually more around the data now rather than actually you know, just the perimeter. Perimeter is the basic still ready. You still have to do it, of course, but that doesn't stop any of those hackers to get, your, get access to your data. So this is why it, there has to be more focus towards data-centric approach, which is around the data itself. So data is a new perimeter if you think about it. DLP is more about a combination of people, process, technology. So as any other uh, information security process, it's, it's again a process, basically. It's, about, it's all about a combination. You can't just have a technology and you know, protect the data itself. Just that wouldn't work, really. You have to have a mix of everything. I'm going to go about the next few slides anyways about it. So Ernest and Young actually did some research a couple of years ago on all the different breaches which have taken part, taken, you know, happened in the last few years. And the root causes of some of the beaches were actually related to these, some of these areas, really. So lack of awareness in the people, which means the awareness programs which you have in the business you know, were one of the causes that it wasn't covering enough, or probably it wasn't enough for how to protect or how to guide people on how to protect the data itself. So that could be one of the major causes, actually, in that case. In terms of process, you know, not, people not knowing about how to handle the sensitive data is, again, one of the main root causes there. If they don't know what is sensitive data, if they know how to actually protect them, you definitely you have a problem there. Technology, of course, if you haven't got the right technology in place, it wouldn't work again, really. So technology is 
as much importance really there. Uh, Gartner did a sort of a, a survey, actually, they released a survey about information security spending forecasts, and DLP is one of the major or the biggest uh, investments through 2020. In fact, 90% of the organizations are already looking to implement some form of integrated DLP. Does anybody know any integrated DLP actually what it is really around here? There's two major categories of DLP. So there is, if you look at this, if you speak to vendors, they will talk about enterprise DLP generally. Integrated DLP is a feature set which comes with some other data security products. Who over here actually uses Office 365 in their environment? Any of you? Office 365, Outlook here? So in, in, in those, basically, you get some, if you have a license, say E3 license, you get some basic feature set anyways with Office 365. That's basically integrated DLP. So any integrated uh, feature set which comes with some, some of the technologies is actually more about integrated DLP. Isaka did a survey earlier this year which came to point that social engineering and the insider and cyber threats were the major concerns for the businesses. And that's absolutely true. If you think about the links people click on and get infected is quite a lot. And this is how most of the cybercrime actually starts or initiates, nearly 94% of it. Probably, I would say, over the 90% actually starts that way. So it's a major concern. Talk about insider threats. There could be probably a few different types, of course. There's one who is the, probably, you know, the malicious one. Say, suppose someone is leaving the business, they, they try and carry away all the data with them, you know, whatever they've been working on for the past years. That is a risk to the business. So that's an insider threat in that case. The negligent, probably I would say uninformed, if the people are not informed enough to how to protect the data, they could probably lose it by accident, just by negligence. That's the ins negligent insider there. And the credential thief, so that those are the ones who are the external probably hackers, criminals, who send across emails, phishing emails, try and you know, compromise the workstation, seal the credentials, and they are as good as being an insider in that case. So that's these kind of three kind of... Pornmon did a sort of a research on this actually and came out that 68% of the uh, incidents which happened in the organizations in the US were cause of employee or contractor negligence. Again, uninformed staff. So again, that's something very crucial there. 22% malicious and probably only 10% were the ones which are credential thief. Now, if you look at the cost side of it, of course, the, because of the high numbers on an annual basis, the business, it, was, it, would, it would cost more to the business in terms of employee or uninformed uh, employee negligence. So, and the criminal, of course, were less than that. The per incident cost to the business was actually more on the credential thief than, than the, any, any else. So Pornman Institute did a research and they found, they, they suggested some of the insider uh, things you can do actually and activities you can do to prevent the insider risk. The, on the top stands the DLP. And the second stands the mandatory user training and awareness. In fact, the mandatory training and user, user awareness, I'm covering that topic actually later on this afternoon again in one of the sessions. So, how do we go about building a strategy for securing data or you know, sort of data loss prevention? Think about data like this. Most of the organizations have around 20% of the structured data in there, probably between 20 to 30%. It's hard to assess exactly, but around between 20 to 30%. 70 to 80% is actually unstructured, which means it sits across all the different systems in the business, in different departments, and in documents, PDFs, images, those kind of files really. Now, the 20%, you know exactly where it lives generally. Most of the organizations are aware about it because they generally would live in systems, you know, some kind of databases, data warehouses. So those are the ones, there are controls in place for that. Whereas for the unstructured, if you think about it, there's hardly any controls because we are relying on the network perimeter. They're relying on the endpoint security solutions, which probably don't help enough because if a user clicks on something malicious, that system was gonna be infected. So it doesn't help enough in that case. So you've got to do more around the unstructured in that respect. And you really can't protect something what you don't know. And the 80% is more of the what you generally don't know. So for a program, actually, for a program like a data security program, you've got to have some objectives in place. So some of these objectives you probably would have already in place. First question you want to ask is, what are we trying to protect here? Where does it live? Who has access to it? Who is the owner for it? 
there has to be someone accountable for that data, for protecting the data, securing the data, who has access to it. You need to know that. You need to know all these questions. You need to know the answers to all these questions. And what are they doing with it? Unless you don't know about this, it's difficult to keep tap on all the data around the business. It's not easy enough. So ideally, your data security program should look like something like this. You go to discover your data. Without discovery, you actually wouldn't know what, your, what data you have, where it lives, and how it is, on what systems. You go to classify it. Classifying is all about making sure you put right controls in place for the right types of data. So if you are bound by some regulatories, you probably would be, uh, say, suppose it's a PCR regulatory you're bound by. You, you would know that you've got to take care of the credit card data. You, you know that you've got to take care of the customer data. So you, unless you classify that data, it's a confidential data, it's a sensitive data, you generally don't know how to put some controls around that in that case. So classification is absolutely crucial there. Again, that's where the security technologies come in place. In DLP, there are there is many different technologies you can probably uh, use in your business. It could be data loss prevention tools, it could be rights management, could be all those areas, really encryption and all those areas. And then you've got to monitor that, of course. Once you know what your sec secure sensitive data is, you've secured that, you've got to monitor it to ensure that it doesn't leak, it doesn't, you don't lose that. So talking about technologies, generally if you speak to vendors, these are the two categories of technologies uh, you probably would hear from them. Most of them actually, the big vendors out there do enterprise DLP, which is comprehensive solutions, portfolio of products. They would talk about data in motion technology, they talk about data in rest, data at rest and in use technologies really. So they are full blown, appliances, software, depending on what, what you look at. So they are full-blown solutions. Integrate, again, as I mentioned before, it's more about a feature set that comes in addition to the products which you already be using or which you probably look for. So that's the integrated DLP. It might probably might find them in secure web gateways, secure encryption gateways, and the CASB, which is the cloud access security brokers. So most of these CASB brokers actually, how many of you have heard about CASB really actually, the cloud access security broker? It's a fairly new sort of uh, concept in terms of Gartner actually because it's been there for a, still a few years now. There is, it's about protecting your data in the cloud, what goes on in the cloud actually. So focusing on the different areas of uh, data, when you look at the technologies, you would see technologies in these three areas. So whether it be in data in motion, which would protect data from all these kind of uh, in motion ways. So you might have a network DLP product for that. You might have endpoint product for data in rest, or you might have again endpoint, different separate endpoint product for data in use. So these are the three categories. Talking about implementation. Now, DLP is a massively disruptive process, business process. It does, when you have DLP in place, technology in place, it can actually, it has, it can stop data being transferred from one process to the other, another business process. So you've got to be really careful when you actually implement that. You've got to have a good plan for it. Make sure you do, could have a long monitoring sort of a focus on it. So before you implement policies on your DLP technologies, you've got to ensure that you monitor it for a good long time to understand all the data flows and then start preventing it or stopping it, because otherwise it will actually stop a lot in the business in that case, and you definitely don't want your unhappy users in that respect. So just to summarize the whole of this, these are the different elements you would want to look at in a, in a DLP program, or any data security program, in fact, in this case. I'm just taking an example of DLP in this one. So the compliance, understand what regulatory bodies actually you, you're liable to, really. Could be PCI, could be, uh, financial services uh, authority. Once you know exactly who you're gonna be responsible to really in terms of data, you need to understand what your data types are. So data types could be car data, could be customer data, could be one of those really, or could be anything else really in that case, depending on your industry as well, of course. Do a risk assessment of it. Understand what is the risk actually if you lose that or how can, could you lose that. Build some policies around it. How are you gonna protect it? You need to have some policies. How are you going to classify it? How are you going to handle that data, sensitive data itself? Build some policies. Once you have some policies, you need to make your staff aware about it because the staff actually sort of work with your data, sensitive data all the time. They need to be understand, they need to understand basically how you're going to classify and how they're going to be handling it. If it's a sensitive data, 
they need to be aware about that. So awareness is a key over there. Discovery, this could be one of the places you could, depending on the size of your business, if you're a small to medium business, you could probably do it by yourself in a manual way. But if you are probably a larger business or a medium to large business, then you want to look at some kind of technologies. There are many technologies out there who do all these discovery tools and discovery software, really. So you want to discover the data. Once you've discovered the data, you want to classify it. You need to understand what is going to be your sensitive data so you can put controls mainly around those kind of data which is most crucial for you. Understand the governance, basically, of it, really. So who has access to it? Build a governance model around it. Who is going to be the owner for that data or for that data type or for that particular in the business? So, and who has access to it? Understand all about that. Remediation, this is where the different tools come in place. So whether it be DLP or whether it be rights management or any other tools, actually, encryption tools, this is where your tools come in place. So you want to put some policies in place on how you're going to be remediating it. So if you found some data somewhere which is sensitive that lives on systems, what are you going to do with it? You've got to have some policies in place. You've got to have some rules in place to understand what you're going to do with that, whether you're going to be encrypting it, whether you're going to be moving it to a central location, or you're going to be uh, using some DLP tools for that. So key takeaways from me in that respect. Uh, the first thing, discover and classify your data. That's absolutely crucial for data security. Generally, what I've seen in, in, from, in working in different organizations in the past, when we talk about DLP, most of the organizations go and try and find buy you know, technologies first, rather than doing this step first it's very crucial to do this step first before you go and buy some technology. Plot a life cycle of your data. Understand how the data flows in your business. How does it actually get created? How does it get shared, stored, and works, and flows around the different business processes? This is a, absolutely a key, really, because unless you understand how data is flowing in your business, you don't know how you're going to be protecting it, where you're going to be putting the right controls in place for it. So you need to understand the whole life cycle of your data in the business. Update your policies. Again, once you know exactly what your data sensitive data looks like, you need to update it, your policies to say that how you're going to classify that kind of data, how you're going to uh, handle that data. So it's, it's a key for the business as well, for the users, for the staff to understand how they're going to be handling it. Create some awareness around it. Run sessions. So before even putting in technology in place, make sure that get, you get the users, the staff on board with it. You need to have that first. Deploy the technology in waves. So do it in different ways, waves, really, because unless if you do it full blown, buy some technologies, put in place, it will block, it will stop a lot of business processes. So make sure you go through a long monitoring phase. I've heard some organizations, in fact, do something like six months to even 18 months of monitoring, just monitoring to understand what the policy is, to understand all the different ways of it. Lastly, Build a gap analysis. Do a gap analysis of it, really. Understand the compliance, if it meets the standards. Understand all of that. See what your gaps are from all these technologies and things. And then start reviewing it, going through the process again, the same process I mentioned again last. That's my contact details. If you need if you have any questions, I'm here all day today. And I'm going to be around for the next couple of days in, in Riga itself. If you've got any questions, feel free to connect, ask me. And more than happy, if you've got any questions now, I'm happy to answer. We've got a few minutes left, actually.